um, is looking at creative computer science education um, with the main aim of encouraging girls into um, STEAM, not just STEM, subject. So, why data driven girls? So, basically, this is about um, <coughs> looking at um, using the form of classical ballet uh, for teaching computer science theory. So, <coughs> one of the main things that we look at and um, that is hard to teach um, in a computer science class is like large data sets, uh, complex theories, um, and just the whole notion of computer science seems inaccessible sometimes to people. So I was a uh, A level and GCSE, so for those of you who are not in the UK, so up to pre university uh, computer science teacher. I am one of the, I think it's, you know, 83% who aren't um, trained in computer science. I do not have a computer science degree. I am self taught. Um, and in some senses, that makes it a little bit more challenging because you're ever thinking, are. Oh, I haven't studied this, so I mustn't be getting it right. So you have to make sure that you're one step above that. Um, and that was a pretty interesting process for me as an educator as well as a learner. Um, so why do we use data visualization? Because it's cool. Um, and also because it teaches the students how to use JavaScript um, for one of the many other languages and things like that. But I'm just talking about um, a, a, a way of sharing um, using web technologies with people that feel afraid to use them. Um, so I use a company called Animated Data, who create amazing data visualizations. Um, and I just say, oh, I want to do this cool theory, and it needs to kind of do that. And they just go, oh my god. <laughs> um, and then the other thing that we look at is using um, um, more data sets from things like the skeleton tracking and the connect, and I'm going into more um, haptics and then other cool stuff. There is two demos running at the back, so one of them you can download into the connect, um, if you wish to. And the other one is uh, looking at the uh, Touchable Universe, the haptics feedback, um, which Alex will explain later on. And then we'll go into the very, um, at the very end, I'll talk about the very new for the new ballet when we're looking at more biomedical feedback and things like that. So, classical ballet uh, for me, so it's, I did that when I was younger, but it's also um, very akin to programming and to the um, algorithmic structure that comes with computer science. So how rigid you are with your programming languages and how structured you have to be with your algorithms is exactly the same thing that you have to do with choreography and classical ballet techniques. For example, a uh, motif called a passé chassé en arrière de quasi direction is a set motif that you have to do. So it's like a function. There's only one way to do it. I will demo it later when they're not filming. Um, <coughs> and with 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 the heart, the idea of the classical ballet, it's the whole body. In the same way that you might have attributes and other things that you apply to your programming. So you can't modify classical ballet steps the same way as you can't modify and mix programming languages. So this is where the alignment comes. So we think of it as a sort of choreography's algorithm design and the actual steps that you do are the sort of methods and functions that you might run in programming. So, and then the other thing is, why not have LEDs on everything? Because I just love LEDs. So these were um, the first point shoes that I did. Um, this is the very first prototype, which the guys from the next office dance did, not the, not the actual guys that are here. Um, and so at the VA, uh, there was a digital design weekend where we debuted the very first ballet in 2014. And um, one of the things that they were looking at there is the sort of crossovers of digital and art. Um, and one of the things I wanted to do was um, allow students to understand eight bit arrays. So every, uh, you'll see there's lots of LEDs on the costumes, but they're always eight LEDs so that we can look at eight bit arrays so that students can then understand how indexing and things work when they want to play around with the code. Um, one of the challenges is, is that punches don't like wearables. Um, so that's one of the challenges that we have to come up with. And that's quite interesting for the students to come up with different ideas and also the people that we work with. So we have lots of input in that you can see just at the very top in there, and that's a Velostat switch. It's a pressure-sensitive switch that works by just collecting a data point based on when you go up one point. Um, and so that was allowing the students to look at data that they were actually physically creating. And it's quite hard, it's quite an abstract thing to think of data. It doesn't mean anything to anybody unless you apply um, some sort of like story line to it or some sort of um, interaction or visual process. 
So one of the things that we wanted to do is allow the students to experience computer science but through this uh, classical ballet. And then from an audience perspective, is to then look, these are all performed in the theatre. And they are, um, so this is a screenshot from uh, Datastorm last year. And so one of the things that we want to show is that computer science is a beautiful process. Coding is beautiful. You see some people are making code and it's like a, a, you know, a, a painter at work or an artist. Um, not necessarily my code, by the way, but, but there are other people that code really well. And then from, from, the, from myself as an educator, everything has to be underpinned with theory. So there's the, there's the pedagogy of it, the subject and the content. And then specifically for the last ballet that we looked at, um, which was all to do with um, system thinking and networks. It was important for us to show that computer science can be seen as an art form. And, and a, a good way to do that and be accepted by the world is to produce research. Um, it's quite hard for people to understand <laughs> the importance of um, what theories we were covering and why we were covering them in each ballet. So, so we did a couple of papers. Um, and then we looked at, in terms of the content for each ballet. So the very first ballet we did looked at very much the, the theory. So it was called a Erastra, and we covered um, algorithms, uh, debugging, computational thinking, big data, and Boolean and binary. And they danced in a, in a way where we did um, binary counting and things like this. And then the piece that you can see here, which is from um, Data Storm, about a piece of data traveling across the ocean and how it interacts with its environment, the same way as a bit of data traveling across a network and how it interacts with the interrupts and viruses that might happen. As you can see at the back, there is a live heat map, slightly distorted. Um, to go with the actual arrival of the data of the other thing. And this is where the dancers were actually dancing in parallel with serial data streams. And then one of the things that we looked at that was complex for students was um, uh, protocols. So how, how do they work and what do they do and how can you then show that in a form of ballet? So this is the data from the two ballet dancers. So when we first performed this, they performed, it's pitch black, there's no dancers on stage, it's just the um, actual um, um, skeleton tracking that we did. And then later on throughout the process where it's where the bit of data is jumping from node to node, we then actually have the dancers come back in on, on stage and actually dance in front of their own their own data basically. So it's really important to um, show and I was trying to explain to the students, as amazing as this is, it's you know it's lines and triangles. So when you're trying to show the data visualization for the students, that they can just go, oh, well, I can say, I might be able to do that. Um, and that was one of the things, even though the work that a piece of different animated data is just amazing. Um, so all of our code is also open source and it's available on GitHub and also on CodePen if you want to mess around with it. Um, and we kept on advertising that our code was on CodePen and open source and like nobody played with it. <laughs> so we, we thought people would go, oh yeah, cool, I'll just do that, I'll just do that, but they didn't. Um, everyone just kind of looked at it. So the other thing, when one of the things that we found challenging for DataStorm was actually getting large data sets that then produced um, clear and um, usable and understandable bits of data. So we were looking at trace route data, but it didn't really look that good on the screen unless you really modified it to look really nice. So then we, so we're using, well, one of the other pieces we're using, the 100 years worth of rain data and the animation is based on each month represents a circle, the size of the circle represents the amount of rain, and the position was based on where the dancer moved um, during this piece. So this was like really um, interesting in, for the students because they could just say, oh yeah, it's like rain puddles, and that idea. So this is one of the hardest pieces that um, the actual the data animator found, and um, to find a data set suitable enough for this particular section. Um, and that's one of the things that we've been, um, why we use a lot of weather data in our pieces, because A, there's loads of it, um, and it's understandable across the world, whereas not, ex not necessarily all data sets are suitable for um, a cross-cultural approach. Um, so we mix these with um, using the actual data visualization as a, um, as a kind of extra dancer behind the students. Um, so as you can see here, we actually use um, the Connect data to store the data because um, a lot of the performances that we were doing, um, it would you can't guarantee that the Connect's going to carry on <laughs> for the whole performance. So a bit of redundancy to have some uh, stored data. 
and also for the dancers as well. So when we recorded the, the data for, for this particular piece, we had to use a single dancer, even though there's seven dancing it. And, and this particular ballet, this particular section of the ballet is nearly five minutes long. And that's really, really hard for um, dancers to do. Um, so, and so what we looked at was, so the one dancer had to dance for like 40, so like repeatedly and repeatedly so he gets clean data. And one of the things that we noticed from, from our perspective is that we could tell which dancer had done which data visualization once we presented it. And we found that really quite fascinating. So, <coughs> so, we use, um, so we use lots of JSON data from the Connect. We use um, uh, JavaScript in the D3 library um, in order to um, allow everything to be web enabled, and that's really important for us, is that we can share it elsewhere. Because one of the things that we want to do is trigger data for online audiences that may not necessarily be in the actual data. So, and then that was our version of the Hungarian bubble sort for checking the validity too, just so for those of you who are computer science people. So, and then one of the things that we also found, um, we were looking at social networks for this particular one and how um, viral messaging and, and viruses impact on it. Um, and we ended up doing a simulation because it was a lot easier to see the nodes happening, the interactions between the nodes, um, and then um, later on um, how the virus propagates through that network. So that was quite an interesting um, kind of jump after us getting loads and loads of data for this. So from going from simulation, we actually looked at live data from, um, from wind maps in order to sort of look at the patterns that the weather produces in order to generate the choreography. And this impacted on at least 50% sort of, of how the choreography was actually designed um, to perform along the floor. So if we'd actually decided to track their foot uh, patterns, it would have created sort of weather patterns such as these. Um, which the girls thought was pretty cool, so that was <laughs> quite interesting. And also, this is an amazing kind of site as well. Um, so, and this is taken from when we actually did it. This is an old recording. Um, so, one important thing for us in terms of using data visualization and sort of web technologies is actually not just for us to use them in the performance. It's actually for them to look at how we can be um, informing our choreography or in our choices um, uh, from the other people doing work. So, love and code pen. Um, so again, all of our codes are on GitHub and on code pen and on Amazon buckets and stuff like that. Um, so this is the connect running at the back, and this piece is based on debugging. Um, and obviously, that in that piece, nothing ever goes right. The dance always fails and then it completes itself. So, um, and this is quite interesting for the students to see how they could just use triangles and circles to represent actually a dancer doing. Um, ballet movements. And you can easily see that and it's a beautiful uh, piece of work. So um, Alex is going to come up and talk about the connect and more of the sort of haptic stuff and I do wish you, you should have a great on play at the end of this. Um, <coughs> so Alex, you want to come up? Uh, so, uh, I mean, when, when I started working on this project, I think the thing that impressed me was um, the, how, how a 14-year-old ballet dancer had much better personal discipline than most 30-something computer programmers I knew. They are um, literally amazing. You give them, you know, two days to learn a piece, and you know, you say this course will last exactly four minutes, 36 seconds, and it will. And um, it's just like they don't complain. They just seriously, ballet dancers, way above computer programmers. <laughs> But, uh, so, yeah, the work we did with Connect was... Um, oh my god, sorry. <laughs> I don't know what's going on. Oh. Um, we, we wanted to make it easy to use uh, Microsoft Connect motion capture with, uh, basically on the web. And if you're not familiar with how the Connect works, it basically, it's a little box, it looks at you, it draws a stick figure of exactly where you're standing, and it just gives you that data, which, you know, it's very nice JSON. You can say there's a knee here, there's a foot here, in three-dimensional coordinates. Um, so we created a little web server that plugs into a connect, it's running over there, um, and you just pull it as a JSONP um, source. And every time a frame of data comes in, 
uh, your, you know, whatever JavaScript you're running receives that stick figure, and you can draw it how you like. So that's how, you know, that, that image was created in D3 from the JSON that was being pulled in real time, um, and you can see all of this running at the back. Um, so, the haptic stuff, yes. So this is new as well. Um, so another thing we've been working on is the use of 3D, 3D touch uh, in, um, you know, as another form of immersion, uh, particularly in education, because most, most computers you know, the best touch experience you're going to get is something like Tactic or, you know, your phone vibrating. Um, whereas what you could experience is being able to touch something in 3D. Um, it's very hard to explain why that's amazing. You have to literally just go over and try it. There's a little, there's a tooth run, so some three teeth um, running there. And if you just grab the joystick, you'll see you've got a cursor, you can wave it around and poke it. Um, but again, we're using web technologies for that. We're building out a, um, a JavaScript API so that you can create your own 3D worlds um, that you can physically feel. At some point, we're going to work out ways to do VR with them, but uh, at the moment, it's, it's just touchy feely. Um, so, yeah, come and see me if you're interested in, in any of that, um, and I will explain and I can show you some source code. Um, so, the source code for the Connect server stuff is all okay. on GitHub. Um, the source code for the Haptic stuff, probably a little way off yet, yeah, that's still crazy in development. So, one of the things that we're looking at to talk about VR is the next ballet is um, called Pain Bite, and it's about chronic pain and biomedical engineering. So, it compares the pain pathway system to that of social networks. So, we're taking the network that we built in the second one and then pushing it out to do more things. Um, so, kind of what changes happen in the network with our message to what happens when you have a pain signal in the body and how the sort of neurons react to that. Um, and then looking at um, how biomedical engineering is actually a positive impact um, and an enabler for people who suffer chronic pain. Um, and that is me. I have something called a high frequency spinal cord stimulator and that allows me to function and you don't see my pain. Um, that doesn't mean I don't have any pain, it just means I'm not on the floor. Um, or on really like high dose medication. Um, and what we, what we want to look at is, A, we're going to be doing the theater piece with um, all of the technologies that we're doing, plus some others. And then we want to compare that with a VR section of the ballet. So does the audience have the same emotional connection and understanding of the theories that we're looking at in a real collective theater experience to that of a solitary, VR experience, and I don't mean that in a bad way, I mean, you know, when you've got your headset on, it is solitary, you are on your own. Um, so that's what we'll, we're, we're looking at in terms of where the, the new ballet is going. And um, so the ballet will have, um, so this is like a, an EMG, so this is an electric muscle sensor, um, and we've got that work to work with the micro bit, which most of your sevens um, have at the moment, so just using a bit of Python to get that to work. Uh, we're using a a uh, heart monitor, a pulse rate monitor. Um, we might use sweat, it just seems a bit gross. <laughs> so I don't know, but the dancers do sweat, man. And temperature is just going to be... So we might do it anyway. So yeah, and this is a picture of my spine. Um, it might look better on that one. Um, so, th so the idea is that this, the, the idea of the invisible being exposed the same way as the idea of um, the abstract being concrete um, is one of the things that we're, we're looking at. So we always see, for us, as, as data, as storytelling. Um, and that is why I've done the Data Joke Dance project and I hope to continue that further. So if you have any questions, feel free. Thank you.